actually last Monday night. They played well. They played well. They played well for us tonight. But they, yeah, they played the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn Nets tomorrow, yeah. Brooklyn yeah. yeah. Nets. Definitely Brooklyn tomorrow. Definitely Brooklyn. <laughs> Brooklyn. <laughs> Jay-Z's team. <laughs> Welcome to Game Day Battle, where Cleveland sports news means biased and outspoken opinion. We're a shy member tonight. Ramon Torres is sick, so we're going to carry on without him tonight. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> He's missing uh, Great Lakes Brewery Christmas Ale Night. This is kind of something, yeah. For it is the season. For our veterans. Courtesy of, uh, yeah, Christmas. Tail. Happy veterans. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, veterans have a good drink, too. So, uh, yes, they do. Anyway, R Ramon, uh, get yourself rested up. Get back here next week. Um, come on back. Come on back. So, we still have left most of our game day crew. Brett Finnegan on the end here, our resident uh, Monsters fan and resident Monsters expert. <laughs> uh, do we got any, got any Monsters update today? Anything good? I uh, had a great uh, road trip. Uh, so far, we're going to be in Abbotsford on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, Actually won both games in the weekend over and against Houston and Texas in shootouts five to four. Hey, uh, awesome. road, road record looks pretty damn good right about now. Uh, come back home this this Friday against, on the sixteenth against uh, uh, Grand Rapids. Ooh, Grand Rapids. the guys from Michigan, the Griffin. Mm. So uh, all right. Doing so pretty good. We uh, we actually get an extra point for a shootout. Is that right? Yeah. Well, you know, if whoever wins gets two points. Okay. Whoever loses still gets that one point. Okay. For, so, for entering. Okay. Number one division in our division right now. So fantastic. Uh, That's need to awesome. Get down there. there. There's a winning team so far out there in Cleveland. We need to get down there too, Cleveland. Yeah, yeah they do. Fifth uh, in attendance in the AHL. So uh, we're doing pretty good. Nice. I mean, we need to get more people down there. But hey, if we the more we pack it, the more pressure there is to maybe make that Columbus watch. team the, the uh, Penguins, the Wings. There's nobody else right. out there but us. So are you the more paint dry? Yeah, no, that's probably not one. Maybe not. It's probably gonna take a while too. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dale Shantz Tersey with all the wise comments here on yeah. to my right. What's up, man? <laughs> He's a firecracker. Pop. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll definitely have to have to make a. Um, a night to get down to the queue and see see the monsters. Um, also, we got to make a night to get down and see the Cavs. Cavs are yeah, absolutely are happening now. It's go time. Uh, it is go time. It's at least startup time. Maybe not go time because they're not quite going yet. We're gonna hit that. Um, you know, the, are the Cavs victims of uh, you know poor talent, poor preparation, or is it more that the schedule? is not really in their favor. Eight and game road trip to yeah, start the season. To start the season. So uh, we're, we're going to hit all of that. Game Day Battle is brought to you by Bamboozles Restaurant and Lounge in Parma. They have the best drink specials anywhere. Seriously, buy one, get one free drinks. How often do you hear of it? You don't. They do it twice a week. Billy's mom makes the pasta sauce all the time. And the burgers, you simply won't find a better one. Check them out. Bamboozles.com. Again, bamboozles.com. When you go there, tell them GDB sent you. That would be a little more appropriate. I should do that. Yeah, what? Well, that's one blowing up. The beer bottle. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our uh, special effects budget is kind of low, so let's uh, <laughs> let's save them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, Holmgren has is now on record as saying that he would like to coach again, and this is a guy who was has been successful in Green Bay and developed Brett Favre, has been successful in Seattle, and then of course uh, he's also been successful at the higher uh, the higher uh, rungs of that those two um, or at least of Seattle's organization. Yes. So. Um, Obviously, a successful, uh, successful guy, a guy that's built teams, and a guy that we are very excited about getting here. And he is a guy that will be coaching, and probably will be coaching again now. So, question is, not so much can we get him, but would we want this guy back here? Come February, the season we're having now, to say it just continues, the first half flip-flops over, becomes the same thing in the second half, and Shermer's gone. Is this a guy that we would like to see here? Dale, would you like to have Holmgren as the, the head coach for the Browns coming up for the next season and moving forward? Uh, there's, you know, positives on both sides of this. I mean, he, he knows the organization. You know, he's been, it's been in front of his face for the past uh, three seasons. You know, he knows his personnel and the players that he has and, and what they're capable of. Um, th that being the shining points of it. The downsides are... It, it, 
it's almost like getting a demotion as opposed to a promotion and how is he going to listen to guys above him that are that that have decision power that he once has that no longer has is he going to be able to give up give up those coaching reins that Brett held so tightly or or is he you know it's just it, it, it's it's a tough spot I, I i think he wants a fresh start i think he's ready to go somewhere and and pick up a, a playoff potential team you know the dallas rumors uh you know i also heard about sean payton possibly going there so they're all just right. rumors right now uh as far as him coaching the browns i would be for it but i just don't see how it could happen you know he's he's a proven coach he knows football could he step down and he, he would definitely do a better job than pat Shermer. Right, that's but, true. Uh, I think you could do a better job than that. Yeah, I probably could. I probably could. Well, <laughs> Brett, uh, Dale definitely touched upon some uh, some interesting aspects of this. Uh, um, I don't really comment at all now. He's done it. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't follow bone, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. Um, so. Assuming that he is actually wanting to coach, and mm-hmm. assuming he says in some way that he would come back here, <clears throat> would you want him back here as your coach for the Cleveland Browns moving forward? Uh, I don't mind him coming back as a, as a Browns head coach. Uh, obviously, he's got a great resume. Um, you know, I completely agree with with Dale with the whole. Besides the whole Pat Trimmer hire, but um, if we look past with these these head coaches that have took over the president slash GM type role, these these coaches that, that didn't do so well as being president slash GM of their their organization. They they've actually stopped doing that and actually won Super Bowls. I mean, I, I don't want to throw a name out there. Maybe like Bill Cowher. I mean, throw he it, was, throw he, it he out was, there. He was the GM of the Steelers, and he decided to There's hand Bill that Cowher. off. And look, I mean, he won a Super Bowl. You know, I mean, it's he's had a great record. They've always been in the standings in the in the North Division. So, I mean, why not? I mean, he he didn't. He didn't figure out to be so well with the Browns. He did. I like his draft picks. I mean, who else would have figured that Phil Taylor would have been a fucking great defensive uh, line lineman? He didn't. Know. He had no well, idea. He was pretty high up. In go the back. Draft. Go back to the uh, the tape on the at, at Creekside. Because <laughs> I remember, I remember like Phil Taylor. Who the f- what? <laughs> well, it was because we dropped down from Julio Jones yeah, in, a, in a five number five pick, I think. But he'd be, we, he'd, we'd, we'd have to fill a Sean Rogers hole. Just saying. <clears throat> yeah, but guess what? He turned out to be a pretty good it's defensive uh, lineman. Hole. So um, I like it. I like <laughs> the, his draft picks he had. Um, besides the Pat Schumer, I also good Dale. I I wouldn't mind having him here as that right. coach. Yeah. Well, and th- and that's that's interesting. I mean, we're I'm, honestly we're not going to go anywhere in the next couple of years anyway. So why not try it out? Whoa. See? Yeah, I'm he saying just, it. He just wrote us off We're for not, a few years. Come on, man. At least two more years. Away. I mean, not that far away. Yeah, well, I want to though, if you, have, if you have that solid head coach like a Cow or a Holmgren or a Dungy, will you get off Bill Cowher's nutsack? <laughs> I'm you just throwing names out there. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, and I'm just kicking Bill Cowher out of here. I'm just saying throwing out names. One Super Bowl in 15 years, and he played the Browns and Bengals for a decade, and he could only manage one Super Bowl win. We can't even win. Gu- guaranteed when he had the division guaranteed to him for a decade. I just threw names out there. So, well, I, I, I will give you credit down. for he threw Should it out go. there, and you didn't jump on it right away, and I, I, which is out of character for you. Yeah, I know. I bit my it, took, it took you twice. I know. I, I was but, throwing names out there. I'm saying if you throw out there like a home grin or – or Dungy or a Gruden, then players are want to there. come. Now we're getting there. I don't want fucking Gruden. Fuck him. Throw Mangini out there. I want him back. No. I'll take Mangini back too. Fuck yeah. If you bring, if you put those head coaches out there, players want to come to that team. You know, it's like, you know, I like that head guy. I like Holmgren. You know, I like, you know, say Reed or something like, you know, Peyton. You know, Andy they have. Reed? No. He's I'm a just saying. I'm just. Throwing, he's got. It's a possibility. But I'm saying, if you put that name out there, then players will actually might want it. Might. Want to come to the shores of Lake Erie, and that's true. We're we're at least in a, at the point of potentially getting a courting uh, courting uh, free agents now. So having somebody like Holmgren or a big name here, where it makes a free agent player want to play here, that's a big deal. Um, now with a new owner, that helps a lot. There are a lot of things that we can do to make ourselves more, I guess, competitive in the free agent market. Um, I, I think we're all in agreement, though, that Holmgren here wouldn't be rejected by us. And, it's a, yeah, it's a step up. You know, the, he he is a, a big part of the guys that are here. He's the guy that picked Whedon from what I've read, at least it's believed, that he was the one that kind of hand-picked Whedon, at least at the spot they were in the draft. I'm not saying he was the best guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, 
you know, it, it may burn him in the same way that Schmeagel got burned by the uh, by the the ring. So um, Schmeagel, dude. <laughs> Mike knows his Lord of the Rings shit. I do, and there's there's a number of out there people out there that they're with me. They you got it, it right now. Here. The trailer for the Hobbit. It's the ring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So um, we're all in agreement, Holmgren would be a, a nice addition here, and I think he actually, in the right scenario, with Haslam saying the right things, I'm not saying Haslam wants him here or anything like that, but it could happen, because it's, yes, it's a demotion, but he's already being demoted anyway. He's going from being God in Cleveland, God of an organization, basically owner without the money up front, to a coach. He's, he's receiving that, de de uh, that demotion, everybody sees it, now, if you can come here, and if you're looking at the team you put together, had a big hand in putting together, and now you can say, look what I can do with it, and, and you come in and have a winning season after a losing season, you can say, without actually saying these words, Shermer was a bad pick. He might have been a good pick, or he might have been a good I'll coach say those eventually, words. but he didn't write. But if he comes <laughs> in and does what Shermer couldn't with these guys, now he gets to say, this is the team I built, this is what it can be, he's here for a year, two years, whatever, mm -hmm. and then he walks away, and nobody talks about a failure in Cleveland. They talk about a few bad decisions, but a lot of good decisions. He picked Whedon, and there's probably a lot he saw in this guy that he liked, and maybe he thinks he could actually make this guy happen and make the team happen. So... Um, in agreement, and we'll just say Ramon agrees with this too, because he's not here. He doesn't have something negative to say about it all. So we'll just assume that happened. But um, negative Nancy. <laughs> that's right. Here's the big challenge. The big challenge. And <sighs> wait for it's, it. It's huge. Wait for it. Shermer. <laughs> Under a, a torrent of anger and criticism has done something right at least. We can all find one thing at least right that he has done. And Dale, I'm gonna start off with you because I know um, this was especially tough for you because you've been especially tough on Shermer. Yeah, yeah, his, so, his, his, his uh, seat is so hot that it's, it's gone. It's, <laughs> it's, it's ashes it's now. Burned, it's He's burned sitting on a pile of ashes. With, with, with a really hot ass. He's like, man, I gotta get You think get Shermer has a hot ass? I, I just wanna say. <laughs> Nope, nope, I meant that in a non I'm not saying that. non-sexual way. What are you, if Elmo? I replay it back, right. Right. Oh, one good thing that Pat Shermer's done while he was in Cleveland. He paid his taxes. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> oh, what's your mind? That's for? great for Cleveland. Two, you know, 7% of a uh, couple mil. Mm -hmm. That really helped. Thanks, Pat Shermer. Did, did he hit your club? Nope. No. Nope. He was not. He, could a, have, he was though. not a crazy horse patron. I he might think have. better of him had he. He may have paid. People. I don't think he's the kind of guy that that would know what to do at a strip club. He's, he's looking for the, uh, the yep. other type. Yeah. When you're, you know, like, like when you're supposed to when you're supposed to tip, he would drink, and when you're supposed to drink, he would tip. Is there protocol? Um, be like, Is there etiquette? Not supposed to touch now, but he would try to, and then you'd be in the VIP lounge where it's okay to touch, and he'd be like, I don't think I should. I'm gonna ask Brad Childress what he'll do. <laughs> Maybe Brad will give me the play. And Brad will be sitting next to him yep. in the yep. VIP lounge. Okay. Dipper. <laughs> right now? Right. So, yeah, no good. That's it. Taxes. Taxes. Well played. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Maybe I should have refined the question a little bit instead of on the field. But, yes. Well, you did not. I did not. So. And that's what you found. So, Brett, um, Pat Shermer's paid taxes. And he's paid a lot of taxes. A lot. Good. He is a lot not. A, he's not a strip club goer, though. We've established um, that, and he wouldn't know what to do there. But he has paid a large amount of tax on good. a large money amount of money that he's received for running his team into the ground. Because I didn't pay my taxes, so I'm good. He he's better than you. Yep. This is on screen, buddy. I have to go to Chef Village Municipal Court on Wednesday and just be like, I forgot this man. I let it in. Here you go. But anyways. <laughs> This sounds true, real. True story, but um. <laughs> anyways, uh, there really isn't a lot of uh, good things to think about with Pat Trimmer here. But I will say this: and one good thing about Pat Trimmer is that in this course of this season, being what are we two and seven, right? Yeah, two and seven. Uh, even though with Brandon Wheaton and quarterback, he has stuck with him. Uh, it, at least he's not trying to shake things up, trying to get things. You need a solid quarterback. You need to have that kind of stability. 
Uh, and he hasn't gone away from that, so... That's not even his call. Shut up. <laughs> Fuck you, man. I know that, but it, it sounded good on tape. It's not even his call. <laughs> it's not good on tape. <laughs> well, okay. I, I, actually, well, I, I agree with you, Brad. Go ahead. I mean, he could have easily taken Brandon Whedon out four games ago. And no, like, he couldn't have. Huh? No, he couldn't have. Yeah, ignore, the, ignore the... There's no way they could have. I mean... That's Shut who they up. Drafted. They, he could they, have. He said he was the starter. He's the starter. It's not even his call to well, decide who's starting. He also yeah. said they also said that there's going to be a quarterback competition, and then second week of fucking preseason, or not even preseason, two days, they're like, Bruno Williams going to be a starter no matter what. Yeah, like, that's not even a quarterback ca- competition. Well, he was a starter from the day they picked him, and there, there's no doubt about that. And you're right, Dale. But you know who didn't do this? Talk during his you shit. know who didn't? was Mangini. And do you remember the mess that we had with Colt McCoy picked by Mangini? And then there was, um, uh, who was on the, the bench? I want to say Holcomb, but not Holcomb. Uh, Derek Anderson. Uh, Derek Anderson, who'd had a good year here, one good, half a good year. I think we had and, Brady Quinn in the mix there, too. And then you had Brady Quinn in the mix. So you had all these quarterbacks, and there was never a, a team handed to a quarterback. And that is something that is so absolutely important for franchise quarterbacks. It happens every time that uh, a quarterback comes in in the first or second round and they're meant to be the franchise quarterback. They hand the team to them. They don't give them a game or two and say, if you can prove to me that you can win us the next 60 games, we'll give you the next game. Yeah, how'd that work out for Mark Sanchez? Uh, well, Mark Sanchez has had a, at least a career there, and it's debatable whether or not it's been a good career. Yeah, when, the guy Mangini, came out, when Mangini was there, he, the, had, he, had a, he had a good career. The guy came out early. Oh, completely off the topic, which is already off the topic, yeah. but on the side. I straight. Three times can, off the topic. I straight. Can, can I, is, it, is it okay to bring up Cincinnati? Feel this, free. This last week? Sure. This last week, and they yeah, played that, that was a, that was the a, Giants. That was an <laughs> NFC, AFC, Vegas clusterfuck. Oh, is that what that was? Yeah, okay. That's right, man. Okay, so, I mean, they could have won. Giants, they, the Giants lose in November, okay? I'm a Giants fan. I can agree. Right. We start out hot. We start out 6-1, and 5-2, and 7-0, and oh, and then we lose every game in November, and then they win every fucking game to the Super Bowl. That's because they hate Thanksgiving. They is that what it is? <laughs> or it might have something to do with the fact that their entire city is, you know, still still kind of underwater. So, well, well maybe not still, but the players they hate turkey. Bad. Those players are living on big hills and big mansions. Oh, they were, man. They were all on the Jersey Shore, dude. A lot of those guys lost their homes, man. Some. Of them. Is that it? Is that it? Did maybe, it? dude. It's hard to get a good night's sleep when my, uh, my, my, when you're Tempur-Pedics in fucking Maine. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. <Sure. laughs> bit further okay in the Uh-oh. spirit of big change Uh-oh. and uh you know talking about maybe coaching changes and stuff like that three guys three guys that you would like to not see in a browns jersey next year to mm. absolutely season ends first rule of business is to make sure these guys don't come back now it can be trade and don't envision some magical trade where we get Tom Brady or something like that. Um, but mine. I know, I know. Sorry. I don't want to play anymore. So uh, no, no trade. But I mean, just, just simply, this guy shouldn't be here. Anybody else, somebody else should be in his slot where he is right now. Three guys. And uh, I picked on you before, Dale. So Brett, I got to pick on you right now. Um, three guys that you do not, without question, not even, not even debatable, should not be here next year. Phil Dawson. You bastard. You're an idiot. I'm kidding. <laughs> I hope so. Blasphemy. The one guy that consistently scores us points. Yeah. Um, three guys and a Browns jersey that I want to see here next year. Hmm. Uh, one would have to be uh, Hardesty. Only because he hasn't done much at all besides so take it. space in the uh, injured reserve. Yep. Um... I even go with uh, Massaquai. I think he's uh, had his run here at the Browns. Uh, another guy that gets injured, but he's also, you know, concussion prone. So, uh, and I will have to say, Greg Little. I, I just think he he is not the answer. Just hurry up and get him out of here. And he can't catch a fucking ball, even with the special gloves that they have. He cannot do it. Um, other than that. Huh. Went receiver twice there. Huh. Yep. All right, well, um, so uh, running back, 
two receivers gone, replaced with whoever, free agents, draft, whatever, anybody's better mm -hmm. than them. All right, I hear, uh, I hear a little bit of um, very gentle and very poetic disagreement to my right. What you got, Dale? This. All right, I'm glad you asked. What you got? <laughs> I'm about to give you a dose. <laughs> All right, number one, I'd have to say fullback Owen Morasic. Get him out of here. Oh, fuck. Everybody. Brought him in here with the idea Good that point. he could be another Peyton Hillis. We need a blocking fullback. Bring in Smelly. A, four a, targets, a, four a drafts. Lorenzo Neal type fullback that yep. is just going to fucking plow holes for Trent Richardson. Smelly. Allow him to make that second read. That's, what gonna, that's what's going to develop him into uh, a top five uh, back in the league. Put you up there with the Marion Fosters as we just seen AP. Break a beautiful run because he's got yeah, a nice block and fullback. That is the guy. Number two, I would have to say uh, this one's kind of a gimme, but I don't think Scott Fajita is going to be playing anymore. I think he's probably done. Going to call it a career. Right. So not a talent issue, but just kind of a free pass for me right there. I'll take Scott Vegeta. Uh -huh. And uh, finally, I I'm either going to go with, uh, I'm going to agree with Brett there and say either Greg Little or Masakwai. Um When Masakwai's healthy, He's proved that he can be that 6-7 catch receiver, you know, 80, 90 yep. yards, but he's just never healthy. And Greg Little, while he's healthy, he can't catch. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got he's to bobble the ball one time before he can catch it, and I don't know if, you know, I, the, the excuse last year was he was a rookie, he needed more time. Well, now he's got a second year, but yep. I mean, what do you think is a better tandem, Josh Gordon and Mo Mass or Josh Gordon and Greg Little? And that's basically where, you, where you're going to go from there. But we don't have enough room for all these uh, top two wide receivers and, and Mo Mass or Little. They're not slot guys. We've got Travis Benjamin in the slot. So it's going to be Benjamin, Riley Cooper, or I'm sorry, Benjamin and, and, and uh, Josh Gordon. That's the future at the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to be uh, Greg Little or Mo Mass. Well, and, and both of you have said that. I'm, I'm, I'm right with you. Um, Massaquai. I, I never liked the pick to begin with, and you know you, you give a guy a chance, and he didn't. As you said, he's shown some signs of, of being a really good receiver. He hasn't been. He's been here enough enough season uh, of each season, and he has been here enough of the seasons in, uh, overall that he should have developed really at this point. And you know I'm not expecting Calvin Johnson. I'm expecting a solid target, and we haven't had that. Uh, injuries have been an issue. We can get the same thing out of. A lot of different guys, I think, that we've gotten from him, and uh, and maybe spend less money on it. So I, I think he's definitely out of here. A little, at least, has some potential because he's he's a little bit younger. He he has a lot of physical ability. It, it's mental. It's mental. He doesn't keep himself in the game. He had a nice sit down, a nice lunch with Alonzo Morning. I don't know if you guys read about this, but he came in the locker room and he's usually the guy that isn't serious and is kind of always joking. And he was all like just dead set on on sacrificing, on, on sacrificing things to to gain something big. And um, it, it's very small and it's minor. And he's a, he's a kid, but at least little situations like that can start to sort of sort of mold a guy's mind. Mentor. We, yeah, exactly. And and I, I think it's great of, of Morning to even take the time to, to meet with this moron. But he did, and, and he couldn't make a big difference. And this might be the beginning of him really looking, as we've all done, you know, we've all been just idiot young dudes that just do. We just act. And then there's this point where you start looking a little more introspectively, and you start sort of critiquing yourself. And maybe that's what he needs, and maybe he's on that path. So in a few years, maybe he is the receiver that he could be. So anyway, um, the other guy, Sheldon Brown. We I, I think we all like Sheldon Brown. He's he's a, solid he's a good player. Two. I like him. He's old. He, he you know you see him get beat periodically, especially by this new talent at, at wide receivers. It's just it's getting to be such a wide receiver quarterback tandem heavy league, and it, it really is. And and uh, you know you mentioned a six or seven catch guy. We need to, it seems like a lot of teams have like you know, 10, 12 catch guys with obscene numbers and, and, and touchdowns like crazy. And um, that's kind of where it's heading. And, and, and Sheldon Brown, he's, he's old guard. He's old guard. We need a new guard there. We need somebody that, that can do what he has been able to do and be a leader. He's been a good leader, too, and, and a locker room kind of guy. So I'd like to see a, a replacement there. Um, this is going to sound off 
sort of off the charts, but punter, I mean, our punter, I just, there's so many times where it's just like, these are little tiny squib kicks, and it's annoying when, um, you know, you're already getting four and out, four and out, or, and, and, and you're punting the ball, and now you're giving them good field position because you just have a 20 or 25 yard Nothing punt. makes me madder. Then it sucks, okay, I know it's, it's a punter, and it's not as cool as saying, you know, a running back or, or a wide receiver. But it's field position, and if you have a, a shitty offense, if your offense cannot move the ball, at least get it down on the other side. Put them at their 20. Put them at the 25. Don't give them the ball at, you know, the 50 or their 48 or some crap like no, that. No, it's garbage, and Mike. It, it You're is. fucking and sick of you, it, I can tell. You do not mm-hmm. believe me, but I no, swear I do. to you. I do. Okay, and, and I don't have... Game. I don't, don't have, fucking believe you. You pick a fucking punter. Well, you know what? I don't have stats to back it up. I have the eye test. I have just watching it going like... God, this guy sucks. We, we, we punted from our 35. Why do they have it at their 45? I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? It's like that, that's, that's a, a, that just shouldn't be. You can, so. can we use Pat Shermer as the third guy? He's not a player, but sure. Damn. All right, so uh, the Cavs, we've got a small amount of time left. I want to just fit some of this in. Uh, Cavs fit are, they have uh, one, what, one win, two wins, I think? Two wins. Two wins, two. okay. Uh, Approximately five losses, six losses, who knows by the time this airs. So uh, the big question is, talent problem. Is the problem a uh, preparation problem, or is there some other thing like schedule or some sort of fundamental thing that uh, we can't control that is an issue right now? Uh, Dale, let me hear it. Well, definitely the schedule's against us. You know, we got uh, eight, eight out of our first ten uh, road games. And, uh, you know, we hung in there with a couple of these guys. Big win against the Clippers. We're still young. Got a lot of injuries uh, taken out the first, you know, the first stretch of the season here. But I like what I'm seeing. Deion Waiters is showing that he's, uh, you know, a legit future star. Andy Verishow coming out crazy. Second in the league. Average rebounds per game. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, t- some, some tough losses up there. We kind of fall out in the last, the fourth quarter. But I think that it's something that we could build on and uh, definitely uh, l- look for a brighter future this season. So you're you're completely content with where things are. Yeah, and like I, I've actually been watching a lot of games. I've, I've watched mm-hmm. six of the seven games this year, and and we've been fighting. And at times we look really good with lots of ball movement. Other times we look pretty lack, lackadaisical. But it's early. We're young. Well, you know, and, and it's an odd situation because I'm in the same boat. I, I I've watched them play, and I feel really good about what I'm seeing. And then we lose, and it's I don't I, I don't feel right about feeling good about a team that yeah. keeps losing. But I, I guess I'm seeing a lot of good things on the court that I'm. A, Assuming that things will change as far as actual, uh, you know, time, um, uh, you know, timing between the, the different players and 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 getting the last shot or whatever, and and, and I definitely see that. Uh, Brett, um, are you seeing a, a talent problem? Are you seeing uh, any sort of? I'm not issue? seeing. I'm seeing a team that is very young and they're still trying to figure out things together and trying to gel together. I see a a team that has lost their their big center. You know. One of the big centers, Tyler Zeller, out to a concussion. Also lost Anderson and Virgil. When you have no, you, that's your two biggest people on the team. You don't have that. You don't have very much strength down underneath below the basket. Um, I see. I see a team that's. Uh, I, I love watching Deion Waiters. I love watching Kyrie on the floor together. I think they. That's going to be unstoppable for years to come. I think. Um, I honestly, two and five, seven games in. There's nothing to worry about right now. Let's see. Once this team gels. It's going to be out. it's going to be an, it's going to be awesome. It really is. Well, and I think the the, the biggest thing to, to focus on here is uh, take a look at this graphic here at road losses uh, and uh, home losses and and the, the teams the teams that are winning have played one or two games on the road. Uh, we have played almost every game on the road. The teams that are losing, like Detroit, has played. All, almost all their games on the road. We've played all but one of the, the games on the road. It's 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 not really fair is what it comes down to is at this point to look at the schedule and say this team is X and this team is, 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 is good or whatever. So a real quick raising? Very quick raising. We have a very small amount of time left and um, I know we, we talked about it. We all were pretty much going to have the same raising anyway. We want to raise all of our love and respect to our veterans, to those that have given themselves in in so many ways to sort of um, prolong our freedom or or protect our freedom and and keep things moving along. So we definitely want to uh, raise our beer to you. We salute you. Past and present, we salute you. Here we go. Absolutely. And future for that matter. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Mm-hmm. All right. We got... uh, 
literally 12 seconds. Sec no, less than that, actually. About uh, six seconds left. So Mike Brown got fired. Mike Brown got fired, and uh, that's pretty crazy. It is pretty crazy. If you, oh, can't, wow. if you can't get wins with Kobe and Dwight Howard, then uh, you probably shouldn't be coaching. You suck. Ball. You suck. Oh, oh, down, oh, oh we're still rolling, though. But look at this. Uh, okay. Maybe it's an 80-minute tape. It's probably an 80-minute tape. <laughs> 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 That's good, you can cut it right there, man. That's <laughs> 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 a professional watch. That was awesome.